Hi, welcome back everyone. Uh, as promised, here is my first in hopefully a much longer line of videos uh, where I'm going to teach you all how to either start an eBay business, grow your eBay business or somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm going to tell you what I do and how I've managed to turn it into a uh, full-time living. Uh, quite a successful one as well. Uh, there's not going to be any bollocks on this. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I'm going to share all my numbers. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, it's lots of hard work, uh, it isn't as easy growing it as it was starting it, um, but things are ticking over, things are doing really, really well, um, and hopefully, uh, if I can stop saying er uh, in front of every sentence, hopefully if I inspire some of you guys to kind of want to chase this and turn it into something a little bit more substantial than what you're already doing at the moment, then absolutely great. Uh, if there's anything in particular you'd like to know about growing an eBay business, uh, then please ask. I'll try and you know maybe do like a specific video about that. What I'm gonna try and do is do a mix of weekly what's sold videos, because I think you guys tend to like that. And then hopefully another video a week then that will focus in on a particular aspect of running a business. So just to give you guys a bit of background, if you're tuning into my channel for the first time, my name's Jason, I'm a full-time eBay seller. I've been doing this now for on and off about four or five years. Um, feels like longer, uh, but what what's happened is it's grown from me just doing this as self-employed to now having a limited company, and we employ four staff, myself included. So my wife and I work full time, and then we've got two part-time staff who each work about sixteen hours a week. Uh, we're generally doing about one hundred and fifty sales a week, uh, all second-hand items, um, all locally sourced. I would say. Um, and our sales are around about £2,500 a week in sales um, gross before anything comes off. Uh, that sounds like a big number, but there's an awful lot of overheads that go alongside with that. And I have found as the business has grown, the overheads have grown even more and more. So, you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm going to tell you all the little pitfalls and problems that I've encountered just to give you an awareness because I don't think there's much on YouTube really, especially in the UK, of people that have sort of made the leap from a small seller to someone doing it, you know, on a larger scale and how to grow that business in a sort of successful way. So we're now VAT registered. We're obviously completely legit. Um, we've hit that threshold and I had to make the decision to say, right, okay, do I want to grow the business any further than this or do we carry on? So we've decided to carry on. And, you know, I think it's uh, it's going really, really well. So just to put it in a bit of perspective, we've currently got around two and a half thousand items in our inventory. Um, we, as I say, we're usually selling about 150 a week, trying to trying to list about 100 a week, a uh, mix of things, really. But you'll, you'll kind of see as you, you know, become more sort of familiar with me and the business, uh, which is Retro Electro, by the way. Check out our website, www.retroelectro.co.uk. It's pretty awesome. Um, and let me know what you think. You know, as you become more, more familiar with us, uh, this isn't scripted, obviously, and I'm a little rusty on YouTube, so bear with me. Then hopefully you will get to learn the kind of things that I look to buy and sell and maybe it's things that you already do, in which case maybe I can give you a little bit more information about them and why they're successful for us. Uh, if not, then great, and hopefully I inspire you guys to get out there and find some, some cool stuff and make some money on it. Um, so yeah, let's gonna give you a little tour of our warehouse. So we've got two floors, this one and upstairs. Upstairs is office, office space, so one of which is our uh, listing area, and the other one is kind of used for testing and like lunch times for like chilling out for the staff and that um so we kind of try and keep the two things separately so let's try and i'm gonna get the hang of this walking around thing whilst also showing you so first things first this is that's a door this is our packing area so every morning we come in we pull the orders from what's sold overnight we ship every single day and here's the packing area uh bubble wrap and we have padded envelopes down there. We've got more packaging supplies over here. When we sell, uh, records are our biggest seller. Last year, we sold over a thousand records. Um, the sales was over 10 grand in sales just on records last year. So because of that, 
we have these record mailers which save us so much. They're 50 pence each. They cost us 50 pence each, but they save us so much time having to wrap records individually. So we decided to go down that route with uh, record mailers. Uh, so yeah, that, that was good. Um, so moving on to the packing area. Uh, again, what I'm going to do in a later video is show you a, probably not on a really busy day like a Monday when we have like 60, 70 things to pack, but on a quiet day, we'll come down and we'll do a little video and show you our process with pulling, packing, booking the items in again. So all this takes time and all this is the reason why I've employed staff because I think it's something that is quite easily to train and if I'm training myself out of it, it frees me up to hopefully develop the business in other ways such as marketing, self-development, networking and so on, uh, which is the way I'd like to sort of see it go really. Okay, so moving on with that, just like really, really boring. We've got tons of packaging materials here. Wait there. There we go. So cardboard, cardboard, cardboard. That there's probably about a week and a half's worth of cardboard and we'll have to go grabbing some more. But we have got quite a few local places that ring me up and you know I empty the cardboard for them and yeah it's really really handy. Um, so what I'm going to do, there's sort of two or three different aspects to the warehouse. So it is a small warehouse, it's not huge. It's probably 30 by 20 foot on each floor. Um, so the way it works is everything on the left hand side of the building or your right here, whichever way it works. All this stuff is the items that are currently listed on eBay. Oh, this is quite good. Ooh, okay, so all of that, all down there. And then on the other side, which is there, that this aisle is also all listed. Everything from here onwards, from this aisle backwards, isn't listed yet. So that's still stock waiting to go. All the clothes, those coats are listed, but just ignore them for now. So everything through there, let's give you some sort of context. Everything here, is waiting for us to get listed. We're very slow <laughs> uh, because I think as you guys, if you're any of you doing it for any length of time, probably know that you'll list the good stuff first. Uh, the stuff that you know is going to turn around, sell quickly, you're going to make a decent profit on and the, the less profitable stuff kind of gets stuck and puts back and puts back and kind of reluctant to sell items that are worth like three, four pound. So they just get kind of left in these sort of piles here, but we are working on it. We have a plan. So yeah, we're going to ignore all this for now. Just pretend that all this all this untidiness isn't here. I'm going to come back around then and kind of show you how we do the stock. Let me whoosh this around, try not to give you all travel sickness. That's better. There we go. Right, so uh, we have what's called a bay system for inventorying our stock. So eBay, when you list an item, has a little, little box for a custom SKU. So we use that custom SKU box whenever we bay the items or put them away to tell us where the item is. So instead of looking for an individual item in a box, you know, we're looking, we can narrow it down to like a certain box and say, right, it, we're only looking in this one here. So what we've done is we've got loads of these orange boxes here. They're numbered eight to nine. And then it goes further down the, the, the shelves all the way down to the bottom there. Again, it's all mirrored, sorry. So yeah, you just have to take my word for it. And that goes along here. So it's kind of a mix of all knickknacks, really. We try and group similar items together. So like, for example, here, if I can show you, in there is like old retro toys. In this one is Transformers. We use like reusable labels, uh, not really usable, the opposite. We use labels that we can just re-stick over with different items whenever we empty the box. So when we pull, when we, you know, when we sell an item, we know it's sold on B4. So we come down in the morning and we're only looking in this one box as opposed to looking throughout the whole shelf. We found this really, really works for us. It's speeded up our workflow no end. And especially if you've got um, other staff working for you, you need to be able to let them know where they need to be able to find the items on, the, on their own. It's all very well and good. You may be knowing where you've put that funky pair of boots that you bought at the car boot two years ago. Um, but, you know, you can't expect other people to know that. So I think... Developing systems is like a really, really important way to make your business more efficient. Oh, this is probably like business 101, but you know, as, as a guy who never worked for himself before, this is kind of just something you've had to learn along the way, really, and, and try and incorporate these business processes into doing the whole eBay thing. So, yeah, moving on, we have uh, more rows of stock here. Uh, let me see. So we've got like more toys. Uh, toys is a big bulk of what we do. Retro, vintage, some modern stuff as well. 
but the whole mod modern toy scene isn't amazing really unless you're like a sort of adult collector um but you know if you're a kid now buying toys that you know that they're, they're crap really unless they're based on like the latest video game or sort of youtube channel then there's really not that much out there so i think it has all really gone to the adult and collector's market unfortunately um, but there are, there are some sort of new toys that we will look at, uh, again here. So each of these um, shelving racks, or bays as we call them, have got a letter. So this is D, E and so on. Uh, we try to say, try and keep similar things together. So we've got like videotapes up there. And then we've got Lego items here. More Lego here. And other bits and pieces. Now I'm going to flip us around the 180 on the other side. We've got some cool stuff here. So we've got some electronics, not there. Thin on the electronics at the moment, really. So I will talk to you in one video in detail about how I get more stock. And it's very interesting because I don't do car boot sales. I've not been to a single car boot sale in about two years. Um, I barely do charity shops anymore um, because uh, I'll be honest, I'm, <laughs> I'm not great early mornings. It's not that I'm lazy, but I've spent like, 10, 15 years of my life going around car boot sales. And I thought, right, okay, there's got to be a better way of doing it than this. So I do a lot with Facebook advertising. I, I use Facebook Marketplace a lot. I do local flyers. Um, I do, uh, I promote my website a little bit as well. Um, and all of those have been sort of good avenues for me to acquire new stock for the business. So yeah, anyway, what I was trying to say is electronics is thin at the moment. I've only got literally like two or three shelves of vintage stuff. Um, got some more stuff around the back there that needs listing. Um, games consoles we've got plenty of, so the, these are what's currently on uh, listed. We've got some old Xboxes, got some old PlayStation 2s. My knees are creaking because I'm nearly on the floor. You can hear that. That wasn't like that five years ago on my videos, I tell you. A uh, little show you thing here. We have like this little test sheet on all our, all, all our consoles, which goes down. We, the member of staff tests it ticks all these things off and that gets included with an item when it's sold so just extra confidence for the buyer so that they know they're receiving something it kind of minimizes the risk of returns and things so yeah and um, we've got these really funky uh cookie jars i would try not to smash absolutely massive uh, there's an animaniacs one which is amazing and um, this one here which i love it's got pepe le pew don't even ask how we're going to ship these. I'm dreading it. I really, I don't even want them to sell because they're going to be an absolute nightmare to try and pack. So I think all, all I can do really is box, put the box, the lid, sorry, and the base in two separate boxes, have them float in, and then have those two boxes floating inside a bigger box. I think that's the only way we can do it. Um, these shelves are empty, waiting for more stock, which I've got, I've got a load of Lego that I bought the other day. That's going to be going down here. And then some more assorted bits and pieces. Some speakers, some more Lego sets. I don't really sell on Amazon anymore. I've got a tiny bit of stuff left on Amazon, which is literally all in this box here. I've got some stuff in on FBA, and this is merchant fulfilled stuff. So there are a few bits and bobs there. Now, haha, this is the engine room. You know, I said about those records. So what we've got, you're going to have to, I need a new starter on my light, I'm afraid. So it's going to click and whir or something. It's, uh, I'm not being attacked by an Android. It's, a, it's a, a funny light bulb thing. So over here, this is what we call the media room or the dungeon. Um, so uh, this is stock that's currently listed. So we've got CDs, uh, all alphabetized. Um, then we've got... Yeah, all the way to there. They're in different categories of compilations, spoken word, uh, and then it's just A to Z down to there. Then we've got CD bundles, which are here. They don't go for much money, but it was the only way to sort of get rid of them, really. We've got cassette tapes. Uh, we've got more cassette tapes down there. And over here, we've got videotapes. So they're not VHS. These ones are a mixture of Betamax, and then a format called V2000, which was a very, very sort of, it was like the third format in the, in the, video, in the video wars back in the 80s. And it, it didn't take off at all, really. So, but I came across a massive job lot of them. I had to drive all the way down to South Wales from North Wales to, to pick them up. And it wasn't cheap. I paid £500, but I got like 350 tapes for that. So, you know, it, it's worth spending the time with a, you know, with a bundle like that, losing a day of my time, but getting a good amount of stock. Um, from there, we've got more CDs. 
These haven't even been gone through yet. I don't know what's in there. Then moving on to the records. So we've got some posters. No, we don't talk about the posters. <laughs> They're a bit of pain in the backside. And then the records really start, hang on, let's get a better way of doing it. Let's try and stand behind them. There we go, that's better. Records start here, A to Z. These are 12 inch LPs. I love getting my hands on a good 12 inch there. Biggest one you'll see all day. So these are all A to S because that's where all we've listed to so far. Then everything underneath here hasn't been listed yet. So we've got tons and tons and tons of records all the way to the floor. Coming up to here, then we've got singles, uh, compilations, 12 inch singles. Again, none of this stuff is listed at the moment. So it is waiting for us to go through. And then we've got some more videotapes up here, but these are the ones that I haven't put them on yet because they're not really worth quite so much. Um, I'll do a video of, sorry, a video about videotapes one day. I uh, hope to give you guys some pointers. Um, then we've got more records and here we've got a lovely case of, look at that, there's over 500 7 inch singles in there which we need to go through and get listed because again not a single one of them are listed so that's, that's on the to-do list. Got more records down here and then coming through we've got consoles. So we bought a huge job lot of consoles from someone locally uh, last year. Paid a lot of money for it, but we literally cleared the house. It was in, like an entire house full of games and consoles and electronics. And we spent like four grand's worth, four grand on, on the stock. Um, didn't make back as much as we thought we were going to, but we've we've kind of like, we're about a couple of grand in profit so far, but we've still got a ton of stuff left to list. So what we've finished doing now is finally getting them all organized. So obviously you'll have to flip the, you know, have to read mirrored. So, you know, we've kind of organised all them into sort of different categories. The consoles that are still got left to list are down here. So there's about 30 Xbox 360s there. We've left them till last because, I'll be honest with you, most of them are probably going to have some issue with them because old 360s are a nightmare. Um, it's why they just don't fetch much money anymore. Uh, and then we've got more electronics, more PS2 stuff more PS3 original Xbox stuff. Uh, here's just like assorted clutter that we've never got around to clearing out, which we're probably gonna have to. And then coming across here, we've got, guess what? More records. So there's probably another four or 500 records in those two um, sections. So the reason I've got so many is there was a, where I had my old premises last year, uh, was above a comic shop and they closed and I ended up buying his whole um, record and CD collection from him which was ace um, you know we, we we agreed a good price and I um, I've got a good relationship with with the guy obviously he was my my landlord there and known him for years and you know it was it was a hell, hell, hell of a hell of a spend for the business but it's paid off because you know some of the records are sold really well and even the CDs um, there's there's thousands more CDs upstairs. So what's left here are all just the, the decent, like the quirky ones, all your psychedelic, your punk, your alternative, everything that isn't mainstream really. Because if it's mainstream, it's not worth anything, unfortunately. So if you've if you've heard of it, likelihood is it's a pound and free postage on eBay from Music Magpie. So it's all the weird and strange and wonderful ones that you haven't heard of. You know they they're the ones that are worth your money. So um, that's a little tour really, and let me come back through into here, hopefully, let the lights come on. Wait, we're in darkness, oh, there we go. <laughs> that was quite effective. So yeah, and then coming back to here, um, this is, we're just now left with, these are the aisles full of stock that is yet to get listed. We've got some more games console stuff down here, more video games. So yeah, I know these are death piles, but, you know, we are gradually working through them, but there's just so much, which is hence the reason why I've employed staff, because it was just, we were just basically hoarding. So, um, yeah, that's the plan really, is that gradually get get rid of all this, even if we just have to bundle them all up as job lots. So, so yeah, so that's it really. That's a, a little walk around of um, of the space. Um, you know, we all quite work quite well with one another. The um, One of the part-timers, he's a freelance photographer and videographer. He's absolutely amazing. I uh, got married last year, uh, not to him, 
He did our wedding photography though, he was a uh, wedding videography. He was absolutely brilliant. So um, yeah, so now I'm a married boy. Um, so we all work together down here, usually two of us packing. Um, I don't tend to do the packing myself now. Jules, my wife, handles all that because she's got a much higher standard than me. So that seems to work out better. Um, so it usually takes at least an hour and a half, two hours every day just to do the packing, um, which is, that includes booking the items in taking them to the post office, whatever. So we're kind of in the, in the middle of town. So there's a post office like less than, what, six, seven minutes walk away. So it's ideal, really. It's why we don't do post office collection or franking, because we can literally just take stuff, whack it in a bag and, and whip it around to the post office. So so yeah, so that, that's a little bit of a refresher for you guys, just to kind of give you a little sneak peek of what we do, uh, the sort of numbers in the business. If any of you want to have a look on my eBay shop, I'll leave a link to it down in the description down there it's retro electro 666 all one word uh we've got nothing to hide we've got we're completely clear about all our sales about all of our listings um so go and have a look see what you think of our stuff and um yeah hopefully the next video i think will be a like a weekly overview so we'll 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 have a look uh, on a monday at what we've sold in the previous week and i can walk through you guys what we've paid for an item where we've got it from maybe how long it's taken to sell. I'm not going to do it on every item because it's going to be like 150 items and no one wants to see that. But weirdly, I was looking through my old videos and I noticed that the one with the most amount of views had like 7,000 views, which for me is just like, you know, PewDiePie. Um, and, I'm, and that was just literally just me filming a screen, going through a spreadsheet, saying what I've sold. I was like, oh, okay, so that's interesting. But if there's anything in particular you'd like to know um, that you'd like me to cover in a, in a future video, um, please do, because I really think I would like to get into this. And I really, truly think that um, we've got a, a lot of great knowledge to pass on to you guys. You know, we just want to do this to help you. And if it gets to the point where the eBay channel, uh, the YouTube channel makes a little bit of money, then fantastic. That'd be great. But my main focus here now is that now that I've reached this point, I can give that time back into the eBay sort of user base of your resellers, flippers, whatever you want to call yourself, whether you're down here starting like I did two and a half years ago, selling from your garage, or whether you're at the point you want to transition from being self-employed to kind of taking that leap and sort of growing your business and having people work for you. Um, then yeah, hopefully if there's any information I've got about how we did it here, that might sort of apply to you and, and inspire you to take that next step. Because you know, it's it's straightforward. It is. It's not complicated. It's not been easy, but it isn't complicated. That's probably the best way I can do it. Um, pay's not amazing, but it's great, and we get to own our own time. I work literally a 35-hour week doing this, and it's 35 stress-free hours. I could work more. I'm 43 now, and kind of think to myself, well, if I can pay myself a half decent, decent wage and work 35 hours a week, call the shots, take a day off when I want, you know, I'll have the business set up so that I've got staff there that can run it for me when I'm not there, then then, that, then I think that's fantastic, you know, and we've created a little a little environment here where we employ people, uh, we've got someone on an apprenticeship scheme as well, who's doing really, really well, so I think that, um, you know, we'd like to sort of give something back, we make, um, you know, donations to charity of stock, we make um, monetary donations from time to time as well, so do like to feel like we're putting stuff back in into the local economy and into sort of local charities and stuff as well so yeah all good right i've gone on for 23 minutes now somehow so uh hopefully this is like pop my cherry again for youtube and warmed me back up because it wasn't actually that difficult it was all right so if you haven't got bored of listening to me give me a thumbs up give me a subscribe give me all that jazz and there will be tons more videos to follow so thanks for watching goodbye